episode of the okay hey guys um welcome to another episode of the pr room um with relationships and sex talk tonight we're going to be talking about cheating and what is your definition of it um i'm going to be hosting tonight um so tiffany can have some time and i believe we have another person joining us in a little while so um familiar faces are on the screen right now we got barry we got Ro somewhere in the background over there. Um, and Fred should be joining us um, in a little bit. So, um, Barry, let's go yeah. with you because you and I can both attest to polyamory because we lived that life. Um, how does cheating look to you as a polyamorous man? You know, when... Um... When I saw that this was the topic tonight and I, I posted it on Facebook and I shared it with a couple of friends and stuff. And like, so I was asked that like five or six times today. So um, I think for me, um, okay. So the way I operate within polyamory with my agreements with my partners is my partners are allowed to date whoever they want to. Okay. So what, what I consider cheating is when there's dishonesty about what you're doing. And I do have different dynamics with di different partners. Um, I have dom sub dynamics. So within those dynamics, they're allowed to date with permission, which I would never say no, but mm -hmm. it's just kind of a, um, within our dynamic, you know, they, they have to ask. But for example, my uh, girlfriend, Vanessa, she can date whoever she wants to, and we'll typically share like, hey, I'm going out Thing about going out with this person next week, you know, here's what they look like, you know, here's, mm -hmm. here's what kind of person they are, what they do, all that. And outside of that, you know, be safe and have fun. True. I um I think for me, it's also the same because we practice autonomy in our partnership and our dynamic. Um it's when it's the deceitful behavior that happens that can lead to um, something physical or an emotional connection that's not being brought to the surface or discussed with communication. Um, that to me is cheating. Uh, if you have to hide it, you're probably not going down the right route. But yeah. um, I, I, I don't ask questions because sometimes I don't wanna know the answer. Yeah, I think for me, um... Yeah, you know, I, I find it hard to believe that people are that are polyamorous that have full body autonomy would cheat because it's like you already have permission to do what you want to do. So why would you lie about it? You know? Yeah. Uh, so to me, it it uh, that feels like a betrayal. It's like, mm -hmm. like okay, you you don't trust me enough to be honest with me. So we have a deeper core problem with the relationship than this one instance exactly exactly and before i i go over to ro um i want to ask you a question what happens when you feel that you've been cheated on by one of your partners uh, and, I don't... huh I'm, I'm sorry my daughter was walked oh so okay <laughs> <laughs> if um if you've been cheated on by one of your partners and the other partner knows about it? Um, I don't know if I can really answer that. I have not experienced that. I've, um, I've tried to be very open with all of my partners and kind of set up a situation to where they wouldn't feel like they had to, to cheat. I mean, I, so, so, a lot of my partners I encourage today. Mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, as far as I know, that, that hasn't happened. Um, I don't have any experience with that. And, and we're going to get back to you um, in regards to the whole BDSM um, aspect of things. Um, because I'm kind of intrigued to hear a little bit more about how that works and what the consequences are with the betrayal and BDSM. 
Okay, happy to talk about it. Okay, so Ro, how you doing? I am doing great. How about y'all? You know, maintaining. Okay, okay. So, so uh, what is cheating defined by you? How is it defined by you? So when I was in a monogamous relationship, to me, cheating was any time that you were having a conversation with someone trying to um, get to know them in a deeper capacity. Mm -hmm. um, if you were spending time with somebody and I ain't know nothing about it, it was cheating. You were conversating with somebody, it was cheating. Not conversating, it's just like, you know, hey, how you doing type shit. But like it's I said, like, we're trying to make it go somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now that I am not in a monogamous relationship and I am exploring different things, um, I found that it's no different when you're in an open relationship because like you said, Tiffany, um, I feel like, and what Barry said too, if I'm already basically giving you permission to go out here and do something, and I'm just saying being open and honest with me about it, I don't want to necessarily know every time y'all get ready to hook up or y'all go out or whatever, no, I could care less. Like, all you got to do is tell me, hey, I'll be back later. Go do you. Come back. I don't have to know details. Um, but what I found is even when I had an open relationship with a partner, they would do, they would, they would lie. Mm -hmm. Like, and wouldn't tell me like, oh yeah, I'm seeing somebody else or um, I'm feeling a certain type of way about somebody else. And that's why Remember when we first started this um, relationship talk, I was telling y'all that I really couldn't do the poly thing because to me, like you building all these emotional connections with other people that you and I are supposed to have, like that would really, really bother me. I know everybody should have their own relationship or whatever, but it's like, and me and you began this and then you decided to bring somebody else in, but then you started spending more time and attention with them than you are with me then to me that's cheating it makes me feel some type of way because it's not supposed to be like that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm just gonna check to see if for some reason i can't pull up the facebook feed but i'll get it um no i totally agree with you ro um like i said anything where it's deceitful behavior I just, I can't, I can't agree with it. Um, have, and I know, I don't know, maybe our, our idea of, of definition changes whenever we are cheated on because of the, um, the style that it was done in. Because I know for some people, they believe like, oh, my man had sex with another girl. So he cheated, but I'm a little bit deeper than that also. So I'm kind of adding on to my previous response with my definition. I don't care because that's a physical thing. It becomes cheating more to me when it becomes more of an emotional connection because now there's something more to go back to. I understand men are men. They have that hunting, you know, they like the chase. They like something different. I'm not oblivious to that. It's when they want a connection with the person because now it's giving them a reason to come back. Exactly. Exactly. So, and yeah. I, I would like to argue against that a little bit because like something I've heard my whole life that men are men. And I, I think first of all, that the whole idea is what has given men the right to get away with it. Which yep, I think I um, but I've never cheated and I've been cheated on several times. So I don't think it's a, I, um, I, I would probably say 50% of the relationships I've been in at some point, And usually after the relationship was over, I found out they cheated on me and it's mm. part of the, maybe not the right reason to do it, but it's part of the reason I became polyamorous in the first place. Do you think that, oh, go ahead, bro. I was going to say it's interesting that Barry said that because that's what I feel like a lot of these, this polyamory and open relationships and all of that, it came about because people were basically like, if I can't beat them, join them, um, especially for the women. 
women more so got cheated on more than men. And so it's like, well, hell, if, you know, he's going to continue to cheat on me, I might as well join him. And hell, we just, you know, end up bringing somebody else in. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we as women do things to make our mate happy. We may not necessarily be into it or want to do it, but because we know that, hey, if I don't do this, then Susie's going to do it. And I don't want Susie doing it. So I'm just going to say, you know, bite the, bite the bullet and join them. Mm -hmm. And that's when um, a lot of people get, that's where they were saying, when you get into those type of relationships, jealousy and all of those things come in because it's like you didn't go into it from the beginning with the right intention. Mm -hmm. yeah and mm -hmm. I mean oh go ahead I'm sorry I thought you were no I'm, I'm good go ahead go ahead no I was just going to add on to that that sometimes um sometimes people don't realize that jealousy is is a very much a human practice we all experience jealousy whether it's in a relationship or whether it's through family um, workplace work relationships um, but also insecurity, I think plays a part in that too, because what makes someone want to cheat, but also what makes the person that you're with kind of like, um, put up that wall, you know, when, okay. So just to put it out, we've all been cheated on everybody here. We've all been cheated on in some way, shape or fashion, but how has that uh, changed us when it comes to having partners later on or multiple partners um are you more like on guard with a new potential partner or are you just let me see how things play out and if anything like a red flag starts showing I'm just gonna cut it off or am I gonna give them a chance to like show themselves I think for me um, kind of on to your point, I think um, for me, the polyamorous journey was me learning that my jealousy was my insecurities. Yeah, I'm already giving my partner permission today, so they're not doing anything wrong. So why am I, am I insecure about this? Because I'm scared of losing them, or I think somebody's going to better me, or what? So I had to face that and work through that. Then um, after that, I think. The, um, for me, how like being cheated on in the past kind of affected me in a lot of ways was part of the reason I opened up polyamory is because I think it's human nature. I don't think we're designed to be monogamous, to be honest. And um, I think that was kind of put on to us by religion and um, men in control, you know, mm -hmm. trying to control their women and make sure that they like a patriarchal system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the reasons that I opened up the polyamory because open and honest is so much more appealing to me than living a lie and knowing that people cheat and, and nobody admits to it. Mm -hmm. And I I have friends that, you know, that they're, they're like, oh, I could never be polyamorous. But then they're at the bar with me a week later. And if that chick would have gave him a chance, they would have done something about it. And it's like, okay, you would be polyamorous. You just wouldn't want your partner to be because you're too insecure. Right. And I think that I think there I think that people can be monogamous. Like it's to me, it's it's more so of a choice. Because I know when I was married, I didn't see anybody else but my partner. And I know some people like you whatever did you seen up no literally it's like I had tunnel vision I didn't want to see anybody but my partner I didn't want to be with anybody but my partner so for me I didn't look at other people in the aspect of oh I want to be with this person or whatever so I feel like it's all up to the individual because if you feel mm -hmm. like you want to step out every now and again then no you should not be in a committed relationship you should be in an open relationship or a poly relationship but mm -hmm. if you're one of those, but if you're one of those people who literally don't see anybody but your partner, then yes, you're one of the people who can be monogamous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And 
And the thing is, I think we're in a different time too, where monogamy was what was spit out from our elders, like like um, Barry was saying through religion or whatever. Now we're in a, in a time where polyamory, and I think it could be because it's been desensitized as taboo that now people are really looking at it like, oh, I can really be who I really am and not have to hide behind a monogamous shell to make myself happy. Like I can do what I wanna do and not have to answer to someone. But I think the other part of that is, is that, yeah, you don't have to answer to anybody, but you should also be careful of the feelings that you hurt by doing what you do. Yes, like I, that's how I feel. I feel like even though you have permission to do what it is that you want to do, and it's not really giving permission because we don't own anybody, but it's just, mm -hmm. that's the wording that I'm using. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's so true. Like you don't have to worry about that, but people have taken it and ran with it. Like it's not about what polyamory started as in the beginning. You get what I'm saying? Like in the beginning, it was done because of legacy. Like um, there wasn't a lot of people to populate your, your family and keep your legacy going. So men would take on multiple wives. Um, it was also a community thing. Whereas, mm -hmm. you know, we build a community and we made it work for civilization purposes. But now so things have changed and people are using it strictly because of sex. Like um, I, in the beginning, like we've had this conversation before in this group that in the beginning, men didn't have sex just because they had multiple women. They weren't having sex with all of the different women. Mm -hmm. Each woman brought something to the table where mm -hmm. it built civilization or whatever that culture needed at that time. And women actually started the thing. A lot of women want to say, yeah, it was brought on by a man, but no, it was polyamory actually started with women because it was men were going off to war. There mm -hmm. were not enough men to populate their cult. I mean, their, um, their people. So they said, hey, you as the only man or the elder that's left here, where you can take on us as women, they got pregnant to populate and to keep their legacy going. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just about the sex, but in today's society, it's all about sex. Yeah, yeah, everything's hypersexualized. Some people um, are doing it right, some people aren't. But mo majority of the people out here, yes, it's definitely based on sex. Yeah, for sure. Hey, um, Fred, welcome. We've been waiting for you, especially Barry over here, because he's been feeling left out, surrounded by women the past, what, two weeks or just last week? It's good to see you, Fred. I was saying we need a little more match energy on here, man. <laughs> Absolutely. Glad to be here. How y'all doing? Good. We missed you last week. Doing good. Yeah. I have some things that come up, family issues, so sorry to miss y'all. Well, we're glad, glad you're back. back. Yes, yes, absolutely. Glad you're back. So I got done asking Barry and Ro what their <laughs> definition of cheating is. So I'm going to bring it to you and have you tell us what your definition is. <laughs> Um, I think it's very simple. So uh, many people, you know, think of cheating is just if you step outside your relationship or your marriage. Well, not necessarily. Infidelity is um, out, anything that's outside of your marriage is the definition of infidelity. But cheating does not necessarily equal infidelity. So I want to make sure I make that point first. Mm -hmm. If you cheating is simply doing something with another person that your partner has no idea about, whether it could be emotional, could be physical, could be psychological, it could be in anything that you are doing to another person that you would want your spouse or significant other to know about, that's cheating. Just simple and plain. Yeah. If so, you, <laughs> oh, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go no, ahead. No, I, I just want to say, you know, if uh, if you just think about it, and if you do it, but if you 
if if that person did it to you, you know, you will be like, nah, you you, you can't do that because we always want to do the double standard, you know. And so it wasn't all that. It wasn't all that bad. I only when you start using the word, I only, I just, it's cheap. Well, I can't say this because um, I had a friend that my husband did not know about. Okay, mm-hmm. um, he and I hung out all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, did things together, but it was not. He was literally like my platonic friend. But the only reason, no, no, listen, the only reason, the only reason why I kept him a secret is because my husband was one of those type people who feel like you being married should not talk to the opposite sex at all, even if it's a co-worker just to say, hey, how you doing? So I was put in that situation and I'm one of them people like I wouldn't tell him you couldn't have girlfriends like, you know, women friends or whatever you want to call it that you talk to, you know what I'm saying? That's it was more so about his insecurities and he would have like flipped and did whatever. It was nothing like ever sexual coming between us. It was never anything, you know, crazy. It was just the I fact get, that that was a friend of mine for a long time. I get and it. my husband just didn't want me to talk to me and period. I get it, but it's still cheating. Oh, okay. <laughs> Don't it's kind of how you justify it. If your partner would not approved and you still did it without their knowledge simple and plain it's cheating no matter no matter what it is physical sex no matter what it is it's still cheating even if it's on a platonic level because it's not just like a friendship it doesn't matter if it's a friendship or not that 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 part doesn't matter because it's about defying or doing something your partner has no knowledge of no, that's the point. He that, knew. If you no, no, no. If you do that and he doesn't have he or she doesn't have any knowledge, and you know, like you said, he will flip out if he did know. That's cheating. I would say that I I see b- both points of this. You know, the fact that he, you know, it's a platonic friendship, but I see your point too, Fred. And I think that's the key. Like cheating can be defined very differently in different relationships. <sighs> It's like, what is our understanding of, you know, within our relationship, what is our ex- understanding of, what, you know, what's expected and what's what's okay and what's not? And, you know, if, um, you know, if, if I were with a partner that thought me talking to another woman was cheating, we're, me and her are going to have to have a serious talk because, you know, I, I'm not going to lie about it. I'm going to straight up tell you, well, Want to. That's the difference. You can deal. You can deal with it with how you want to, but yeah. uh, that is the key, though, is that, that understanding between you and your partner of what exactly it's okay. Communication. But it was never going to be a, a, all that. Um, that's what I'm telling you. The intention was me never ever and them never ever. But because my partner's insecurity, because like if he had a girlfriend that came around. I wouldn't give a, like to me. It was like okay, that's your home girl. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't care nothing about that. But this is what I found. The reason why you don't want me to have girlfriends is because you want to fuck all your girlfriends. So you think that's how the guys that I hang around with are. So you would basically like I couldn't talk to his cousins. I couldn't talk to like no other male. That's, that sounds so like let a good. So let me let me tell you. Let me tell you what that is. When when a person when a person acts like that, when they flip out, if you just talk to the most basic person, usually nine times out of ten, that's what they're doing already. Right. That's what I'm saying. So to me, that's why I didn't feel like it was cheating because the fact that I told him about my male friend. You know what I'm saying? And as soon as I said something about him, he just flipped out like oh, that nigga trying to fuck you and, you know, this and that. And it's like, nah, it ain't nothing like that. But because every girl you've encountered, you've tried to have sex with, you think that that's the way that my male friends were coming off on me. So that's why I never said that I was cheating because the fact that he knew about him, I just never told him, like, when we would hang out or, you know, stuff like that because I knew it would be a fight or argument when I got home. Yeah, no, trust me, I get it. I get your explanation. I'm just basically going back to the fact of the definition is cheap. 
<laughs> yeah. But for me, it's not cheating. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. For me, it's yeah. not. So your definition is saying that if my partner doesn't know about it or whatever, but to me, it's the intention behind it because you can talk to people of the opposite sex and it's still cool. But if you're talking to them about let's hook up next week and, you know, let's see what happens and all of this other stuff, no, to me, uh-uh. that's cheating. It don't, it don't have to involve any type of sexual No, I'm saying not. just meeting up with the intent of us getting to know each other better on a more intimate level is cheap. It don't have to be, I'm almost saying it doesn't have to be intimate at all. It doesn't, intimacy doesn't have anything to do with the actual the definition. That, that, that so I just, so you, what you're doing. With that's the, what I'm saying. So you don't have girlfriends that you go out with girls who are just your friend, like, like strictly platonic that you don't mm-hmm. sleep with or nothing, but y'all can go to the game together. You could go to the movies together, out to eat together and that's a problem. No, no, no. You, you're not. You, you're only hearing part of it. You're not hearing the whole thing. So yes, I have friends like that. But what I'm saying is, if I do not inform <laughs> my significant other, my wife, and I don't tell them, or I mislead them, or I deceive them when I'm saying I'm going here, but I'm actually going there, or if I'm not. If I don't tell her that after work we going to lunch or whatever or we going to dinner, yeah, that's cheap. That's the point. I'm trying to tell. Yeah, I think withholding because you're misleading. You're misleading your partner. Yeah, withholding part of the truth, which Uh, there's a word, but I can't remember it right now. That 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 to me is is it's it's up there with lying. Yeah, it is. You're trying to cover up where you could be completely totally transparent about what you're doing I know My, you're talking about. and I'm, what i'm like what i'm gonna say is i'm the type of person where i don't care i mean i care about who i'm with but i, I don't care if it bothers them that i'm doing something that makes me happy because if they loved me enough like they say they do then they would advocate for me doing what i want to do to make me happy but, but it's not I, what you do, it is how you do it. It's okay. how you do it. It's how you it's go about it. Kind of. So my thing is, is if, if they're willing to give me that, I would be dead wrong to say, no, you can't do it because then that's that whole double standard thing. So I have to look at it from a bigger perspective and say, okay, well, they're <laughs> letting me live my life. I'm going to let them live their life too. But I would, I would expect them to be honest a hundred percent when they're doing what it is that they're doing. Yeah. Hey, That's a- Tim, um, I've had a couple of people mention that they're having a hard time finding the live feed. Are we sure that that is? On? Yeah. Somebody just said that to me too. Yeah. And I'm, I'm on our page, but I don't see it either. Cause I've been waiting for comments to come up. So, um, let me send Tiffany a text real quick, you guys, but we can definitely still con- converse about this. Yes. Yeah. It's getting really good. I ha- I've had, I've had um, uh, uh, Ro, the same situation that you've had. My, my ex-wife was just the worst as far as uh, me going out with, you know, friends that I've had for years. And, it, and you know, I did exactly what you did. I ain't tell it. You know, I didn't tell it. And um, one time, uh, somebody, you know, reported back to her or something like that. Hey, I thought I saw Fred at such and such and such and such. Uh, were you with him or whatever? Because he was with a uh, female or whatever. And he was sitting down there talking and blah, blah, blah. Now, we were just having a simple conversation. But because I didn't tell her, it turned into something completely different. A whole big something that could have been, you know, a simple conversation. Now, it's like, so you cheat on me with her? I thought she was just blah, 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 you know? And and, and now you got to start, now they go back and they start looking at or thinking about every time you've been with that person, every time you talk to that person, now they're trying to put something together or trying to make you be you know, with that person. You know what I'm saying? Because 
you were not truthful one time. Now they question every single interaction we have with, her, with a person. Yeah, and, but and mine was a special so. case. Mine was a special case because he was also schizophrenic. So even when I introduced them to, from the day I introduced, his brain started telling him, oh, well, that's the dude she's fucking. And so from that point on, he didn't like him, didn't want to talk to him, didn't want, and it was nothing that the dude said or anything. It was just the yeah. fact that it was another guy around his wife and he, he just didn't had, want to. He have security issues. That's just simply point. Right. That's what I'm that's what I'm telling you because anybody else that I've dealt with, like they may not have liked the fact and I even started off and this may be why I'm single too. But fuck that. Because my homeboy has been there for me when nobody has been there for me. You know what I'm saying? Like even times when my husband wasn't even there for me, he was there. He's never tried me in any form or fashion, came off on me, you know, any type of way to try to get with me, even when after me and my husband divorced or any day, he's just been really a good, good friend. And so any man that comes into my life has to know, like, he's not going anywhere. So if so you got a problem with him... That, but here's how you handle yeah. that, though. That is a situation where you have to... You, I'm going to give you a real example. Like, for me, there, my ex um, has some mental... Not, I should say mental neurological issues, motor, fine motor, gross motor, something's wrong with her eyes. It's not connecting. So she's not seeing properly. She can't drive anymore. She she can't do a lot of the things for herself that she used to, to do. So I take her to the doctor sometimes. I pick her up. I have to drive an hour sometimes to pick her up. And I drive an hour back to take her home. Then I have to come back. Right? So... Mm -hmm. I told her that, yes, we're not together anymore, but I'm still going to be there for you to help you, to support you, to inspire you, to encourage you, blah, 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 right? So anybody that I would meet and that I would decide to date on a serious level would understand, because I would make it very clear, this person mm -hmm. is not, this is what I have declared that we are going to still support her with I need you to be on board with it because if you're not then that's going to be a problem so mm -hmm. have to, but you have to put that in the front in the forefront I'll put it out there so that person can that's make the decision if mm -hmm. they want to be on board or not um, don't do so it after happens? the fact do it before so what happens when they say they're on board, but then they don't like it, and then they want to try to change up the program that you set for they them? Not ever, that, that means they lie. Not... That means they lie. That means that and means I'm out. you didn't do anything wrong, as long as you didn't do anything to, uh, to, to hurt that situation, then it's, then they weren't being transparent. And I understand feelings change. But you can't expect that person who was being transparent, who was being honest with you, to just say, oh, your feelings changed. So all of a sudden, I got to change how I treat that person that I came forward with you 100% in the beginning. That's just not how I work because I could do that to you then. You know what I'm saying? Somebody else could make me treat you a different way because... I've had some type of relationship with them. I'm not wishy-washy, and I don't want nobody else that's wishy-washy like that. Let's be honest. Let's be transparent. If we can't be that, I don't want it. I'm at, I'm at a stage in my life right now where if we can't be 100% honest with each other, especially in a committed relationship, I don't want it. You can have it. Peace. See you. That's fair. No, that's fair. And that's what I'm saying. If a mug can't deal with the fact that my best friend is a guy and that he's not going anywhere, like, I'm sorry, but I don't even want to deal with you because to me, it's like, what's so, what is it about him that makes you so insecure? Like, you're supposed to be worried about what's going on between you and I. Yeah, it's not, not him, with, the person. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And even <laughs> if, and now, and I can say this, but some people do now. I'm not even going to lie. Some people do try to do little sneaky stuff, you know, to break up people yeah. and things of that nature because they don't want that person to come into that friendship and break up their friendship or whatever. I get that. But yeah. at the same time, it's like, you know, you should know your friend. 
but and that's you should a, know that you're old. That you control that. They don't. You control yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to touch on that with with Barry. Yeah, Barry. Yeah, I think you, that's why it's so important to establish those type of things in the beginning. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm the type of person, especially with my lifestyle. I'll also have children that I'm friends with their mom and, you know, could go to her house for dinner tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're not comfortable with that, then you don't want to come into my life because this, you're going to be miserable. This, you're not exactly. going to be, if you're exactly. insecure, you can't, you can't be, you can be insecure. Yeah, um, I think what it is, is, is being true to yourself. When you're up front with new people coming into your life, when you're up front about who you really are as a person and whatever love style or lifestyle you lead, if they're not cool with that, then they're just not meant for you in that time of your life. There's no, it, it, it's not saying like it could never happen down the road because we all evolve over time. But to have someone dictate or manipulate a situation that you've already been in prior to them, that that to me is grounds for elimination. Like, you know, look, you made that for yourself. You made that bed for yourself. Now you gotta lay it because I was up front, I was real, I was transparent, I was honest. You told me you could take it, and now you're telling me you can't. In the midst of doing all of that, of saying all of that, you're also trying to manipulate a bond that was already made yeah. prior to coming into the picture. Yeah. And I think, so, I think everybody's going to experience jealousy and insecurity and all that. You know, yeah. to build a strong relationship, you got to be able to communicate about those things and work through it. But mm -hmm. none of us as human beings need somebody else to dictate and control how we live. If, if you can't trust me to talk to somebody, then you don't trust me. I don't want to be with you. Like, why would you want to be with me if you don't trust me? Mm -hmm. Simple and plain. <laughs> it's that, exactly. Simple. This is that simple. But see, some people don't want to acknowledge that they're unhappy or they're un insecure or they have jealousy issues because then to them, it makes them look weak. So they don't want to come off with that, those qualities. But at the same time, there has to be a level of accountability because if they're not going to be accountable for themselves, then it's always going to be, oh, you did this to me. You did this to me. There's or why you make me do that. Or, right, gaslighting is going to be a huge issue. Yeah. yeah. That's that's a toxic thing that I know for me, I don't want in any of my relationships. <laughs> like if you're going to say, oh, well, I wouldn't have done it if you didn't do it. Or, oh, you're crazy. Or I don't know what you're talking about. Fine. Play dumb if you want to. I'm going to play dumb when you act like, I, when, when you want me to act like I know you. I don't know you. Because you showed me a new version of yourself that I didn't sign up for. Yeah. I mean, I, I would say at, at this age that I am now, you know, I couldn't have said that 20 years ago. You know what I'm saying? Right. So because I would have been making excuses. I would have been just trying to justify it. I would have been, no, but it's like, but it's not really like that. And it was really like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A little older sometimes you get a new level of honesty i can't i can't describe it to you but it's it's a whole new level of honesty and you just know what's just not gonna deal with and it, and it's apologetic you know what i'm saying i'm in it's, that season i'm in that yeah. season right now <laughs> yeah for sure apologetic about it about what i will put up with and what I what I want and so right. you know, and I would rather just stay single um, until that thing just matches correctly and, and like you you said you know you had a different time and, and different things in your life you want versus what it used to be and you know knowing yourself helps you pick better partners yeah for sure for sure yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. So I wanted to ask you guys, we've all talked about being, well, Fred, have you ever been cheated on? Because we've already established that we've 
Okay. So, have you guys... <laughs> <laughs> so that was going to be my next question. Have you guys ever done the cheating? Yes. And if so, how did that turn out for you? Um, not Well, I mean, it depends upon when you say, how did it turn out for you? In some instances, it was great. Uh, some instances, it wasn't so great. It, it's, 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 it's what you consider what consequences you're willing to deal with when you when, when you either do it or it's done to you because there's consequences for every single time that you either decide every single week, whether good or bad yeah yeah good or bad and we don't get to choose our consequences that's what makes it that, that much more riskier you don't you don't think that the consequences are going to be this until it's done and you're like, wow, I thought we was going to be able to get through that. I thought that it was not going to be such a big deal. I, I didn't know I was going to get a pregnant. I didn't know I was going to get this. Yes, disease. fuck you did. But yes, you did. Things that, you, that happens when you decide that you want to cheat. And, and, and not only that, but what if they decide, okay, cool. You cheated. You got it. Now they try to cheat back. Different That's tab. A whole yeah. new different level. You know? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, what, can yeah. you say? what can you say? You did it. It's not too wrong to don't make it right, but it's 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 also not right for you to, you know, bust them out or not give you another chance if they gave you another chance. You know? It, it, that, it's a yeah, slippery. It's like race it's of some slippery. Slippery. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's why I'm trying to avoid that. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, I'm guilty. I'm guilty of it. I, you know, um, I think what it was was communication and expectations weren't at top tier levels. So I was misinterpreting things and he was, he had expectations that I didn't know about. And therefore I was just doing what I would have done if any other time, but I didn't know that it would affect him that way. And I didn't know that that's where we were at in our relationship. So I made the mistake and um, I did everything I could to fix it because I didn't, I didn't like the feeling that I got for hurting him yeah. when he was upfront and honest with me yeah. because it wasn't intentional. And that's right. another thing I want to get to is, have you ever gotten into a situation where it's been an unintentional situation of cheating, but you weren't intending on cheating or you weren't intending on it happening the way it did? But that's how it, it came out, you know? No, I've never yeah, I, I, ever I, been. I don't put myself in those that? situations. I say no, because I don't put myself in those situations. Like, if I go to a dude, I know whether I'm going to fuck before I get there or not. It's not no accidental happen. You know, the vibe is just right. So we did it. No, I know intentionally what I'm going in there with him to do. So, no, I've never done that. Um, as far as cheating, according to Fred, I didn't cheat it on every goddamn body. So, <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, seriously though, I, the one time that I consider myself, yes, I cheated. It I was stupid. I shouldn't have done it. Um, I missed the, one of the best relationships that I've ever, ever been in. Um, but it was like the opportunity came to me. It was a crush that I've had on somebody a long, long time. And my opportunity came up. So when the opportunity came up, I took it. And um, I knew that I was going to take it when I took it. And it hurt my partner, like, really, really bad. And from that day on, I was like, I'll never make another person feel like this. Like, that, because it psychologically does something to you to be cheated on. Like, yeah. people don't realize that. And that's why a lot of people can't deal with the loneliness afterwards or deal with the processing of you know being breaking up with someone because it's like I don't want to feel that hurt and that pain so oftentimes people you know they say the best way to get over somebody is to get under somebody or on top of somebody that type shit so yeah Fred why you look like that I'm disagreeing with you oh uh, okay but yeah so that's why a lot of people like people don't realize that it's a reason why you break up and feel that way you need to feel that it's a, it's a process and if you just keep skipping over that process, 
then, you know, you become numb. That's when you don't care about, I'm doing what I want to do and I don't care about nobody. I'm doing what makes me happy. It's okay to do what makes you happy, but once you make what makes you happy interferes with someone else or it causes pain and hurt to someone else, it's no longer just about you. It's about you and someone else because your actions cause another person to feel a certain way. Absolutely. So Absolutely. no. So you can't just do what you want to do out here. It's consequences behind that shit. And are you willing to pay the consequences behind it? Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. if you are, if you are, guess what? Karma don't always hit you. It can hit your your mama, your daddy, your kids. You know what I'm saying? Yep. People don't realize that. They just be like, oh, I'm good with whatever happened come my way because I knew what I was doing. But because karma knows that about you and knows that you don't give a fuck, it hits you somewhere else that they knows you gonna give a fuck. Yeah, yeah. It's not karma. Not I, I always cut dry. Yeah, I tripped and fell in some stuff one time, a couple times. You know, uh-huh. I didn't know I was going. A stick was there, and I tripped. <laughs> you know, hey, <laughs> no free. <Fred. laughs> no. hey, excuse is better than none. <laughs> but I agree with Fred when he said that if people start using that, I only because this is what kills me. When yeah. you find out somebody cheats me, but I only did it once. Yeah, like that once made a difference. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like you should have did it none. Yeah. Oh, we but I only, I only, we yeah. only got together. You know what I'm saying? To do X, Y, and Z. Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah. She just yeah. sucked my dick, like. <laughs> so, so it's here's crazy. Here's what is, uh, <laughs> right? And and I'm 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 coming from the mental aspect of it for a second, especially from a from a from a woman. I'm not a man, but studying studying the, in the field of mental health, you know, we get we get a chance to read and study and have you know information and data. So from a woman's standpoint, when a man decides to cheat, right, what happens is she thinks about all of the emotion information or emotional support uh-huh. giving to her. And she's not getting it anymore because women can tell when your patterns change, right? You used to spend time talking to her about this, that, and the third. Your 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 time becomes shorter and shorter and shorter with her. And they always say, "What if if that person is getting shorter with you, it's getting longer, it's getting longer with someone else." Yeah, right. It's it's just how it works. And so the emotional side of it for women is what what that the data says hurts the most right yep that and the lion yes well yeah that's that's that goes part to the emotion because if you love me you wouldn't have lied to me you know what i'm saying if you cared about me you wouldn't have did so that all ties into the emotion part so so for men men don't have to be emotionally connected to the woman at all we just want to look right that's what it is. It's just physical. It's just opportunity presented itself. And that's, that's what I had said earlier. I said that, you know, men tend to, I, I, I think this is before you even came on that I had said this, but I had said that men are more into like the whole physical aspect of things where y'all, y'all like the chase, y'all like the, the hunt. Um, yeah. But like for the whole cheating thing for me is when it becomes an emotional connection. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. because now you're giving, you can give all of you all you want. But when you start giving what you, a part of me, because I've invested part of me into you, when you get part of me with that to another person without my knowledge or talking it over with me, yeah. now we have a problem. Yeah. Because. Yeah. You you didn't you didn't come to me and say hey this is what I want to do or this is how I'm yeah. feeling and I think it would be good if I did this. You're you're withholding to benefit yourself. But I thought we were in this together. That part. Yeah. yeah. And when I say the lion, I was just basically saying like most of the time when you do get cheated on. Like, we already know the answer to the question. You know what I'm saying? Like, if we come to you and say, hey, 
Did you do X, Y, and Z? We already know the answer to it. We just want to see if you're going to be man enough to, you know, admit to what the fuck you do or, you know, be held accountable for your actions. So and if when a woman you comes to you- being sneaky, that makes a ton of Right, that's, it's like them. putting the nail in the coffin. Like, that's mm -hmm. the thing that- I told him, man, I can deal with I can deal with the truth. It's the lie I can't deal with because the lie does it, it's too many variables that are unknown. And I'm gonna always have something in the back of my mind. So I'll never forgive you. Things will never be the same because it's like the the pieces of the puzzle don't match. But if you tell me the truth, like you don't have to make up the truth. The truth is what it is. So when you say the truth, everything is gonna necessary is gonna fall into place. It's going to be completed. Therefore, I can make a sound decision now on what it is that I need to do, want to do, or going to do. But when you lie into me and I already know the fucking truth, it's like you don't even have a chance with me. I'm good. Deuces. Because yeah, now you insult my intelligence. Go ahead, Barry. I know for me personally, um, once you've cheated, and, I, and I've gone back to women after they've cheated on me, but it's never the same. I don't, I don't, I, I will never look at you the same. I'll never trust you again. I, um, the feelings start to fade. Um, it's, and typically by, you know, I used to stay in relationships way too long. I finally learned to like get out when I can see it. Yeah. But when I was younger, I was staying too long, trying to make it work. And yeah. by the end, I, I was disgusted by them. I didn't want to look at them. You know, and I did that to myself for like trying to stay in and trying to make it work and trying to forgive. And and I, yeah. I honestly feel like, you know, when somebody cheats on you and lies to you and all that, like, you know, it's it's done. And right. I'm not saying that, 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 that people couldn't get over it. But in my experience, no, nah, we 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 done now. We're good. I agree, Barry. I totally agree. So I wanted to ask you guys another question. Um, what do you think makes someone cheat? Mm, I got There's it. nothing. I don't okay. think there's nothing that nobody can do to make a person cheat. Yeah, you cheat I, because you want to. Okay, there's okay. nothing that I can say or do to make you want to go out here and cheat. Because okay. before you go cheat, you can have a conversation and say, hey, you need to get your shit together. You're not doing X, Y, and Z. That type stuff. So it's a choice to me. Cheating is always a choice to me. The cheating is always a choice. At the same time, and that's one reason, I, another reason I got away from monogamy, is if you're in a relationship where you're not feeling fulfilled, neither partner's happy, you're coming home to a miserable home, but you don't want to, you know, you've been taught your whole life that you're, you know, you said you committed, so you're supposed to stay with it for life. And people have needs. People have emotional needs. People have physical needs. People want to feel desired. People want to be excited, you know? And so I'm not, I'm not justifying cheating, but I am saying, saying that I understand if you're stuck in that mindset of like, I'm not supposed to leave, but I'm miserable. It makes sense that you would go outside of your relationship. So, and my, my response is something similar to that is I had a person I was dating and mentally they were not there. Um, anxiety, depression, and things of that nature. So when you don't, when you're dealing with um, a person like that and they can't give you that stimulating conversation that you need and it goes on for a long period of time, you got kids involved. You got finances and all that involved. Sometimes, and like Barry, don't make excuses for it, but sometimes you make decisions and you just like, okay, I'm just going to do this temporarily, right? To get by, to get through this period, hoping that things get better, right? Because you want to save your relationship or whatever, but at the same time, like Barry said, you have your needs too. And a lot of times I really feel that women many times don't put men's emotional needs in play. Um, we, we, are, we, we are tough, we are hard, we this, we that. But we need that emotional connection. We do. We need that. 
And if we don't get it at home, it's human nature to seek it to out. Seek it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, that's why I asked, have you ever, like, do you think cheating is, is like predetermined or is it something that could accidentally happen because not so much accidentally happen. Let me, let me say that, say that, that. So I know something, huh? But even before you get there, like you say, is it predetermined? You didn't really mean to. You know if you're getting ready to talk to that person because you couldn't talk to your your girlfriend, your spouse, or whatever. When you, as soon as you decide that you're gonna seek out another shoulder to talk to, and especially with the opposite sex, if you're hetero or if you're bi, could be the same or whatever the situation is. As soon as you decide to do that, at that point you've entered stage one of cheating. Okay, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. So say a couple mm -hmm. is going through a tough spot, a tough patch. Mm -hmm. um, nobody's talking to each other. It's a monogamous relationship. Yep. And they are feeling their needs are being neglected by their partner who mm -hmm. they aren't even communicating with. They're mm -hmm. not communicating with each other. Yeah. So Probably they need right. those needs met. So they're seeking outwardly in an already fragile state in the relationship, mm -hmm. that to me is catastrophic for the end. Right. Because my vulnerability there. Because you're vulnerable. When you're vulnerable, you and not only that. To the opposite sex. How do you fix your relationship bringing something else into it when it's going to be a problem? What I mean by that is if you already know that you're made, is going to have a problem and an issue with you cheating, seeing, seeking out the opposite sex or the same sex, in, you know, in some people's cases, sure. you know what I'm saying? Sure. Then how do you think you're going to fix that relationship by bringing in somebody else? Like that's it's the part that kills me. It. It's mm -hmm. not about, it's about. Right. It's about, so if you're not trying your to own fix need. it, yeah, so if you're not problem. trying to fix it, yeah. then mm -hmm. it's uh, you got to go. Like not, why fix it? Yeah. So if you're I, not trying to fix it, leave. Well, and that's, I think that's what it boils down to, to be honest with you. But I think most people are scared to do that. They're scared to be alone. They're scared of the financial responsibility. They got kids involved or whatever the case is. Circumstantial. Most, yeah. Most people are scared to leave an established relationship. Starting over is hard. I've done it a few times. It's, it's rarely easy. Um, I'm not, it's right to start for those reasons but you know if you're at that point to where you know you're happy you're coming up home to an unhappy situation and you're starting to think that you like to have things better in your life and have better experiences i think that is and i think us as mature adults we're we're more there and we're more saying you know hey you know what and instead of cheating i'm going to end this relationship I don't, you know, a lot of young people and a lot of people that really, you know, delved into relationships and themselves and grown in that way, they, you know, they're, they're looking for a fix. They're, uh, you know, not to fix a relationship. They're looking for a fix for their heart. In the for, moment. Yeah. 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 And that's what I think, like, I see it happen a lot where in relationships people feel neglected in the relationship in that moment not for a long period of time not to replace the person that they're with just in that moment they feel misunderstood or whatever the case might be that they seek validation they seek the the gratification of someone new who's unbiased to their situation who probably doesn't really know them their character or you know things like that and that's what causes people to kind of step out for a period of time and a period of time could just be a couple of hours it doesn't necessarily have to be months weeks or years down the line it could simply just be like a, a momentum thing like at, at, in that moment so um I don't know if you guys have ever heard the statement my friend told me it a while ago she said um, the reason why women don't get caught cheating like men do is because dogs usually shit out in the open where cats hide and take their shit. 
And it took me a minute <laughs> to understand what she was talking about. I was like, what are you talking about? And then it clicked. I was like, oh, snap. Yeah, no. Dogs really do. They don't care. They'll pop and squat and do what they do. But you never really see a cat do it. Cat being a woman, dog being a man. So who, in your opinion, is more likely to cheat? A woman or a man? A man? Duh. No. <laughs> in, in my experience, it's women. Yes. Right, because yeah, you're on the opposite side. Just gay. I, because I would not say my experience of men, but I would say my personal experience yeah. is women. Yeah, because That's they don't I think, think you're on the opposite side. Yeah. yeah, but I think I think that women do it better, and I'm gonna tell you why I think women do it better. And yes, I'm saying this women. Um, yeah. But we do it better because, number one, we have our priorities together, okay? So if we go out here and we cheat, number one, if we, number one, most of us are smart enough not to bring the man to our house, okay? We're going to his house or we're going to get a room. That's number one. Number two, if we do go to his house, we're not trying to play and lay all day. It's called get me. I got to go home and fix dinner for my kids and my husband or my man or whatever. So I ain't got time. You know what I'm saying? To lay up here and play with you. So I'm get me and I'm going to go home. Okay. We've already set rules and said, don't call me between hours of X, Y, and Z because I'm going to be with him. We, you know what I'm saying? Whereas men, y'all don't worry about that too much. You just go with the flow and you kind of put rules in place as you go. But us, we pretty much do that shit up front to let you know you the side piece. That's what you're going to be. And, um, if you deviate from that in any form or fashion of what the rules are with me, I'm out because you're not finna jeopardize my home. Men really don't do that. They'll let a chick call a wife, girlfriend, and be like, yo, I, I was just smashing your husband last night. Like, And I be telling men, if a chick don't respect you and I mean, as your wife, don't respect your girl or your wife, she don't respect you. So why would you want to be with her? So that's why I think women do it better just because we plan, strategize, and don't just do it at the whim of a hat just because the opportunity is there. Like, we might want him that night, but if I got to wait the next week to get you when I can actually plan some shit out and do it, that's what's going to happen. Now, if so, a man wants to alleviate issues by going that route, that's where he needs to sit down with his wife or his partner and say... I'm not getting A, B, and C from you, but I yeah. want it from this person because I know that they're equipped to get it to me. That is opening up the relationship to understanding, to giving a chance to the, the wife or the spouse to tighten up. Maybe she, you know, fell off. She's going through hormonal changes, work, schedule, kids. It all plays a factor. Whatever. But... A man can simply alleviate the problem, the drama, and the pain by just simply being honest. Same thing for a woman. I'm not even going to say it just for a man. A woman can do the same thing by stating to her husband or her partner, listen, I'm not happy in this department, but I was wondering, how do you feel about me feeling fulfilled by going this route? So, so let's say that you're gonna get beat up. One of the one of the issues, and what I found in relationships nowadays, we are so we are more likely to coddle our best friends than we are our spouses. What I mean by that is, you will. Take the time to understand your best friend, your partner, or whatever. When I say your partner, your friend, not your not your spouse or your significant other. I'm talking about your girlfriend, your your buddy, or whatever. You will take the time to make sure you don't hurt their feelings before you will do the same thing for your uh, for your spouse or for your relate person you're in a relationship with. You don't take the same opportunity and time yeah, is this referring to a friend a best friend or whatever who was in the yeah. picture before the spouse well yeah it don't matter i i see it don't it don't even matter if you call that person your best friend you mm -hmm. you basically put them on some type of pedestal okay mm -hmm. you 
a pedestal where that's my girl, that's my dude, sure. that's sure. my blah, blah, blah. Many times you start telling them stuff before you even tell your partner. You know what I'm saying? They get the first fruits. And 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 it's like if if you treat them as such, then you're not gonna be as willing to try to fix your relationship because you're like, man, bump that. I'm going out here with hang out with you no know, such and such. You, you you don't try to talk or fix it. What you do is you're gonna try to drink it away, you try to smoke it away, you try to do whatever else that is 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 available other than the person that you're sleeping with every night, that you're fixing food with, that you're making money with, that you're making kids with, they're the last person in your life you're trying to fix it with. It gotta change. They don't Yeah, prioritizing. Be- yeah, for yeah. sure. For yeah. sure. And I think another thing is too is that when you put someone on a pedestal, and and I'm not big on that because I'm trying to steer clear of, of feeling having the entitlement attitude yeah. in my relationship. So I'm in my healing process. So that's why I say that. I don't want to be on anybody's pedestal, especially if there's an equal to me in the picture. But I'm not going to be disrespected either by that other person. Now, this is coming from a polyamorous standpoint. Mm -hmm. If I have an established relationship over here and this person is, is new to the relationship with my partner, me and her have nothing going on. I'm not going to be bullied or pushed aside or my relationship watered down just to appease your insecurities because your insecurities is your job to fix. It's not mine. It's not our partner's job to fix. If you feel insecure because of a previous situation that happened prior to you getting with this person, it is not right morally to interject your insecurities into that person's life that was before you. That's why you should heal first. Before right. you do that, you get whatever you need, get that healing out of the way, get that taken right. care of, counseling, whatever you need to do. Right, before right. You start getting into that situation, yeah. Yes. And that's why I said instead of just jumping from one bed to the next one just to get over the next person, it's not good. Like, sex you is never- not gonna, yeah, sex is not gonna mm-hmm. mend a broken heart. It that's damn right. sure don't. Fix it. That's why I said it. it's not to fix it. That's not the, that's not the goal when you, when, thing, when you have what, to, like to now, fix it. Now that's what everybody's all about. Oh, I'm I'm a I'm a fuck this oh, one and that one, that one and that. Oh, he's acting up. I'm gonna go to this one. Or is it true that men keep women around for different things? I've heard that as well. Yes. yes. That's a, just like that's like anybody else. We again, like I said earlier, sometimes we got that girl that just knows what we what 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 needs to be said at the right moment to make us feel that we are a man, you know, um, that we that that we are somebody to to inspire us, to encourage us. We got so many, we got so many women in relationships that try to tear their man down, to try to demas- demas- demasculate him, to try mm-hmm. to make him feel like he's less than, to try to make him feel like that he's not a good father, that make him feel like he's not financially, you know, supporting, that he's not protecting. All these things, sometimes you have to go home and you hear all of that, but you go to work and the work wife says the right things. She says, you know, it's going to be all right. You are a great man. I love that you take care of your kids. I love blah, 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 blah. So it's, it's you like, hey, I can't It's like a wife. breath of fresh air. Yeah. Play that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it's easy for her to say that because she ain't the one at home dealing with your bullshit day to day. See, when that's the thing about cheating, like yeah, when that though, but that's the point. Listen, yeah. listen to what I'm telling. But listen to this though. This is what I'm telling you. Most guys, that's the way they get into cheating because it's like, oh, I got this this breath of fresh air over here. She ain't nagging me. She ain't doing what my wife at home do. This, that, and the other. And that's cool. You're right. She's not doing that because she's not the one who's dealing with your day-to-day bullshit. Now, what happens is your wife finds out about her 
mm-hmm. and the wife leaves you because you ain't leaving your wife. The wife leaves you, and then now you over here with Susie, and now you find out that it's the same bullshit with Susie because now Susie has to deal with your day to day bullshit, so she's no longer fun and exciting. So then, guess what? Now you're looking for somebody else to fill Susie's spot because now Susie's no longer fun, or she end up getting pregnant, or she catch feelings. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a list of fucking things. It's like, it has nothing to do with the other person. It's always you. What the fuck is going on with you that you feel like you need multiple people to satisfy you? Deal with your issues first. Maybe maybe instead of having four bitches you need, maybe you'll break it down to two when you realize and deal with some shit. No, I don't, I don't, I don't you know. You can really handle more than two women. Barry? Do you want to you want to jump in on that? Yeah. I, well, let me say this first. I don't necessarily agree with that because if if I'm sitting here and I'm telling you, look, every time I come home, you home all day. I'm working all day. I'm providing. I'm, I'm every time I come home, there's an argument. Every time I come home, ain't no dinner done. Every time I come home, the house ain't clean. Every time I come home, and it's like I'm doing everything I can to make sure that I'm giving you what you asked for when we was dating. You want a house. You wanted this. You want that. You want that. I'm providing you with all of that. And I still can't get you to do the basic things that you agree if I do this, you do that. So as a man... And because and I'm talking about this is a real experience. It's not hypothetical. So as a man, when when you continue to get that same treatment over and over and over and over again, it gets to the point where you don't even want to come home. You don't. You, you spend. You you take the long road home. You know, anytime somebody can say, "Oh, hey, let's go out," or whatever. You, you take the first opportunity to go out. So at some point in time, you check what they call out. You check out, right? So when you start checking out, that means you're no longer as concerned as you were about her feelings. It's now you are making, you, you, you are trying to take care of your own personal feelings. And I'm not saying it's right. So hear me correctly. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying that's the great way to go about it. I'm just saying what reality is, right? Reality is if a human needs is not taken care of, the basic needs, are, they are designed to go get it somewhere else. That's just basic human design. You know? If, mm-hmm. if you ain't getting fed, you're you going to go find food somewhere else. Emotions are no different. If somebody's not feeding you emotionally, they're, com- they're continuing to deplete you emotionally, you're going to go somewhere so you can be filled. Right, guys, <laughs> and, that, and I'm going to bring it back to the polyamory side. That's the beautiful thing about polyamory is you have the freedom of being able to find those partners who can give you those those needs to fulfill those yeah. needs that you need met yeah so, absolutely and and like to get back to barry i wanted to find out from him is it true that men can't always handle more than two women at a time <laughs> <laughs> is it true that men can't handle more than two at a time well they choose not to put it like that uh, i think it depends on the relationship like okay. uh, example one of my submissives does not want to live with a man. She has children. She's got her own stuff on. She does not want a man up her butt 24-7. She wants the dynamic that we have, and she wants to be a part of my life. And we've gotten very close very fast, and it's beautiful. So, um, you know, and that, so I think it, it, every polyamorous relationship is different. But, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so I would say that I currently have three women in my life that I'm madly in love with. Okay. 
Good. Well, I'm happy for you. Thank you. I'm happy for you because I don't know if I can handle two other women in mine. <laughs> and that's just off of like, you know, the typical monthly thing that us women go through and attitudes and, you know, you know how us women can get. You have three of them. So I wanted to come back to bringing up the BDSM thing that we had started talking about, Barry, in the beginning about how does cheating with that dynamic look and what are usually like the consequences with you being the dom? Okay, for me, whether it's a dom sub dynamic or a re regular re relationship, I'm at a point in my life where cheating, we're done. There's there's no consequences. I'm out. We we tried, you know. Obviously, I you know, you needed more and didn't trust me enough to talk to me and. Um, you cheated, so we're done. You know, that sucks, but, you know, bye. Um, okay. so there, you know, I do have different, within a dom-submissive dynamic, I have lots of rules for my submissive. And the majority of them are things that they already know that they needed in their lives anyway, like, you know, drinking two bottles of water a day, taking your medication on time, things like that. And then the other established rules that, that we've agreed upon. Um, so, and one of them are with dating that, that they need to ask permission. Somebody that I have a normal boyfriend, girlfriend relationship does not have to ask permission with me being Polly. Mm -hmm. um, and I've never told anybody no anyway. It's just part of the control of the, power exchange yeah within, the, uh, within that dynamic of how yeah. that that lifestyle works i got you i got you well you guys we have hit 9 15 a little after so um i guess i would say we did a good job what do you guys think i think we had a great time and i i, I love hearing everybody's perspectives and um it's it was good to have you back on tonight, Fred. I always always enjoy the way you explain things and your perspectives. Yeah, for sure. So next week. Um, Absolutely, Barry. Thank you. <laughs> go outside. It's kind of it's kind of loud, so let me go over here for a quick second. So next yeah, week. Um, say nothing because they were so loud, so I had you guys on mute. Oh, okay. Did you want to say something else? Oh, oh, um, as far as, well, one more thing, as far as the date multiple women and if they cheat, you know, the discipline thing, um, you, you got to establish what the rules are, you know, from the beginning, you know, if there's going to be any punishment or consequences and so, and what are they, you know, mm -hmm. um, there's, uh, some people rule from the book of, you know, hard discipline, and some don't. There's no real, or right, or wrong way to do it. it. It's just about what those people who are in the dynamic decide to do. You know, mm -hmm. um, sometimes uh, in my in my experience, you know, they'll tell you, "I need direction. I need to be kept on a straight path. I need to be kept on a tight rope. So I need correction." You know, um, mm -hmm. I need, and, and you have to decide what type of correction is needed to alter the behavior. Cause that's, that's the, that at the end of the day, that's the goal. If you don't like the behavior that's been exhibited, you have to decide what is necessary in order for you to change the behavior, what you got to do to change behavior. Some people, you know, need that physical, uh, thing. Some people it's more, you know, psychological. Sometimes people, you know, just need that comforting, you know, so you have to really understand who your partners are in that dynamic to be able to really understand what they need in order to go in the direction, you know, y'all are trying to go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I appreciate your input, you both guys, um, on that aspect of things. Um, so what we're, what we're going to do is wrap it up. But before I go, um, I just want to introduce that Barry is going to be hosting next week. And, um, huh? 
Fred. Oh, Fred. oh, you're hosting. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was Derry. My bad. <laughs> so next week, the topic is going to be um, self-care after a breakup. So... <laughs> I was like, oh, wow, I am? Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I got shown. Yeah. So um, so Fred is going to do, I'm sorry, Fred. So Fred is going to do it next weekend or next week. Sorry. I'm getting really yeah. tired. I haven't slept very much okay. in the past few days. But, um, but yeah, so Fred, you're up next. Yes. Uh, Looking forward to it. Can't that's, wait. That's right up my alley. That's right on my alley. I, I enjoy talking about self-care. I, I enjoy talking about things that we must do and need to do in order to, you know, be whole and be, you know, secure in ourselves. So we don't have to resort to cheating. We don't have to resort to right. hurt. Right, and right. And there should be a healing period <laughs> after every breakup, I think. But we'll get more into that next week. Yeah. Um, I'm going to reach out to Tiffany and find out what was going on with the live stream on Facebook tonight. Hopefully that won't happen next week. Um, I really enjoyed this conversation with you guys and I really appreciate all of your perspectives and inputs. And it was a dope conversation and I can't wait to have another one with you guys. So. Absolutely. Y'all have a blessed evening. Talk to you. All right. You guys too. Good night.